Starting life with a disability? You and your family may need a helping hand, navigating special education and learning about community activities, enjoying fun times and meeting new friends, finding a job that you love and a place to call home, planning for a secure future for you and your family. For every age and stage of life, get started today. Visit the Ark of Northern Virginia. Good morning, my name is Lissy John and I am president of the board of directors of the Ark of Northern Virginia. Welcome to our second annual A Life Like Yours Benefit Breakfast. Thank you for spending a few minutes of your morning learning about the challenges that people with disabilities and their family face and how the Ark of Northern Virginia steps in to support them. It's incredible people like you that help us fulfill our mission. Now, today's event was not the original event that we planned, but as many of you with disabilities know, when challenges arise, you adapt. So here we are, gathered safely in our homes, hopefully enjoying some breakfast, maybe even a mimosa, and are ready to enjoy a captivating set of speakers that we have planned for you today. They will all reinforce the theme of creating opportunities. You'll learn a little bit about their lives and experiences and how having access to equal opportunities that you and I may take for granted is so vital for our community. Now, one of those people that we are fighting for, uh, for opportunities for, is my son, Oliver John. When he was born in 2016, doctors said, congratulations, you have a healthy baby boy. And when I took one look at him, I said, I don't quite think that's right. And so unknowingly, I was plunged into the world of disability. And after 18 months of searching for why he wasn't meeting his milestones, why he needed surgery after surgery or therapy after therapy, I finally got a diagnosis, a rare disease only recently discovered and only known in 250 people in the world. Doctors had no answers for me. They did give me a sincere good luck. Now, that diagnosis opened up medical opportunities for my son, but what I needed just as much was knowledge. And in the wee hours of the morning, I typed into my Google search bar, special needs, Northern Virginia, help. And that's where I found the Ark of Northern Virginia. The Ark of Northern Virginia gave me the help I needed the way I needed it. I've devoured their YouTube videos, which helped me learn about Virginia's Medicaid waiver program, which I subsequently applied for and got. I learned there was a financial instrument called a special needs trust, which I got counseling for. And I learned as I was readying Oliver for his first educational experiences about the process and his rights. Now I joined the board of the Ark of Northern Virginia because something visceral happens inside of me when I see the word, a life like yours. At the end of the day, this is my only dream for Oliver that he knows love, that he knows joy, and most importantly, friendship. That when you and your children see him, that you really see him. And I am so proud to be part of an organization that has that same vision for him. Now, um, before we move on with our program, there are several people uh, at the event that we would like to recognize. Um, first, we have many state legislators and county representatives with us. We are so grateful for your support and appreciate your hard work championing the policies and legislation that supports our community. From the Virginia State Senate, we have Senator George Barker, Senator Adam Eben, and his Chief of Staff, Chris Layen, and Senators Barbara Favola, Dave Marsden, and Scott Surville. From the Virginia House of Delegates, we have Speaker Eileen Fillercorn and Delegates David Bulova, Carrie Delaney, Kay Corey, Alonzo Lopez, Alfonso Lopez, Mark Levine, Kathleen Murphy, Ken Plum, Ibrahim Samira, Mark Sickles, Marcus Simon, Rip Sullivan, Kathy Tran, and Vivian Watts. From the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors, we have Chairman Jeff McKay and Supervisors Walter Alcorn, John Faust, Rodney Lusk, Dahlia Palchik, Dan Stork, James Walkinshaw, and his senior legislative aide, Linda Bufano. And from the U.S. Department of Justice, we have Kyle Smitty and Jessica Polanski. 
I also want to recognize our champion level sponsors, Evermay Wealth Management and Magellan Complete Care. These fine businesses, along with the generous event level sponsors, have provided the backing for today's event, allowing us to use 100% of the funds that we raise toward our mission. As I looked over the long list of people registered today, I can't help but think about the millions of stories uh, gathered here together. I hope this event provides an opportunity to reflect on how we can come together and create a society with equal opportunities for everyone. Now with that, I'm thrilled to introduce our first presenter, a writer, an accomplished photographer, a rock star advocate amongst the halls of power in Richmond, and a shining example of what is possible when we create opportunities for everyone. Here is Connor Cummings. Thank you, Lizzie, for your kind words. My name is Connor Cummings. I am 28 years old and proud to be autistic. I did not speak until I was seven years old. And now I speak my own written words before legislators and Congress. This year, 2020 has come in with a force that no one expected. I told my mom on New Year's Eve that 20, but I felt 2020 would be the best year yet. I was wrong. We all have our own stories, our own struggles. We have our own fears and our own determination. Many of our choices have been temporarily taken away, but not all, I chose happy. Each one of us is special. Each one of us is unique. We are in this, we are in this together and the Ark of Nova Virginia to give us support. When I need support, they are always here for me. They helped me six years ago by acknowledging and accepting, but I may not carry on conversations, but I have much to say. I write my words and give me places to speak them. They always pursue competence and recognize in the support in a million ways to learn. And they all, at ARC, they believe they are capable of learning. And that means everything. I am even part of a pilot program for supported decision-making. And we can be with people. I will be speaking in Richmond and DC once again. How you view us and what you believe we can do matters. A person who was told I would never speak, never be able to follow more than one simple command, never pass the fifth grade level and never have any independence has a law named after him, Connor's Law, the Ark, or as I call them, my Ark, was the law with me the entire way. I have passions, I have dreams. I want to make a difference, and I am. I don't, know, I don't want to be known for what I can't do. I want to be known for what I can do. People need to appreciate us for who we are, see our potential, not our cannots. Every one of you have potential. You are valued. You can try like me to do anything. My try today may not succeed, but we have a tomorrow try waiting for us. Give parents and all of you, give us room to be who we are going to be. Please don't think because I have few verbal words that I or any of us have nothing to say. I love Disney, ice skating and photography. I am a free time Special Olympic champion. I wear my Mickey Mouse ears most places I go. They make me feel good in a crowd and I love them. They are no different than you wearing your favorite ball cap or t-shirt. Let us try things and recognize that we will achieve when and if our timetable is ready. Listen to us when we speak to you with words, movements, or typing. We can change the world one communication at a time. No one should ever feel alone, lost or without hope. Autism does not stop because you turn 21. We do not stop learning and growing. We have our own timetable. At age 23, I learned to tie my shoes and swallow a pill. At age 28, I can do many chores independently. I live at home. I do not drive, but I contribute. 
and I write a post conquer for Connor that has 13,000 followers. And they helped create a magazine called Zoom Autism Magazine. To end the speech to sum this up, the Ark of Nova Virginia keeps us support in so many ways. The biggest thing I am thankful for is respect, confidence. But I am valued and they give me people. My people, we the people, for the people. People have power together. Together as people, we can accomplish what others may say is impossible. I have achieved every goal that educators told us was impossible. I was told you can't, you never will. And together, me and my mom with support for me, our Nova Virginia and our people say, watch us. I am a person. I am your son, daughter, or grandchild. I am your future. I am incredible. Wear yourself proud. Please and thank you, Connor. Now it is my pleasure to introduce my special friend, the Executive Director of the Ark of Nova Virginia, Ricky Epstein. Thank you, Connor. I'm Ricky Epstein, and it is my honor to serve as Executive Director of the Ark of Northern Virginia. Our gathering today is a little unconventional, to say the least. The COVID-19 crisis has affected all of us in a variety of ways and to differing degrees. We've all had to adapt our thinking, our routines, the very way we live our lives, and it has brought about a new normal. But for 39,000 people with intellectual and developmental disabilities throughout Northern Virginia and the families that love and support them, there's something familiar in this current crisis. For them, confronting the unexpected has been an everyday fact of life from the beginning. Adapting to change is not new. It's been a constant requirement. While the coronavirus pandemic is new for all of us, the challenge that people with disabilities face is not a new crisis. Today, nearly every family we support is struggling to find necessary, often critical support services. Virginia still ranks 39th in the nation in funding community-based services for people with disabilities. And there are still more than 13,000 people who've been placed on a statewide waiting list for critical services and supports. With a loved one with a disability, life in normal times is a precarious balance. As long as the supports are in place, there's fragile stability. But what happens when you remove those supports? Self-isolating meant many families had to lay off their care attendants, leaving the work of caring for a family member with serious needs solely with the parents, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. The closure of schools meant abruptly adapting to systems for distance learning, but services for children with disabilities were seriously delayed at best, in some cases, non-existent. When the virus hit, parents faced the choice of either leaving their adult children in their group home and only visiting via phone call or video chat, or removing them from their home, their friends, their structured way of life to try to keep them safe. With every new announcement, with every new updates, families across Northern Virginia were asking questions. While we're all trying to figure it out together, many turned to the Ark of Northern Virginia. Those answers could not wait. Questions to our information and referral portal came in at all hours of the day and night. That's why our work at the Ark of Northern Virginia is so important. We've dedicated ourselves to providing information and education to help people with disabilities and their families wherever they are in this very moment. New threats like the coronavirus only strengthen our resolve. Perhaps you noticed the images in our slideshow before the program began. They're an illustration of our commitment to serve individuals and families throughout their entire lifespan at every age and every stage. From early intervention services and inclusive education to supporting independent living and competitive employment, we actively support full inclusion and participation in the community throughout their lifetimes. It's what guides us every day. 
I sometimes think of the people we serve as King Arthur's mythical knights in armor, strong, fierce warriors ready and willing to battle for a greater good. But make no mistake, the armor is a heavy burden to bear and the coronavirus pandemic with all of its fears and uncertainties compounds that burden. It's more than anyone should have to bear alone. The Ark of Northern Virginia helps reduce some of that burden. Throughout the crisis, I've checked in with our families. While nearly all are struggling in some way, there's also a sense of hope, a sense of optimism, born out of the experience of facing previous challenges and coming through them stronger and more resilient. We'll get through this was said over and over again, and in my heart, I know that we will, because we're in this together and we draw strength from each other. In this time of crisis, in this time of heightened anxiety, please don't forget those who live with hardship and anxiety nearly every day and yet persevere. Let's continue our commitment to creating opportunities. Thank you. Parent voices often convey the best stories. Our next speaker is a parent of a 2020 high school graduate and a successful businessman. Those who attended our Oktoberfest Halloween party last fall danced the night away to the talents of DJ Garve. Now I'd like you to meet a true advocate and Garvin's mom, Farah Rodrigue. Hello everyone and thank you Ricky for the introduction. My name is Farah Rodrigue and I'm the mother of a teenage son with learning and health related disabilities. I consider myself a full-time mom advocate but I'm also a member of the Fairfax County Advisory Committee for Students with Disabilities and a parent leader for the I'm Determined Project. I owe my involvement in the disability community to the ARC of Northern Virginia. The ARC has opened doors and presented many opportunities to my family, none of which would have been possible without the kindness and generous nature of Joyce Kelly, a woman who I met at church. She provided me with her phone number and we spoke for hours that same Sunday evening. I walked away from that conversation with a wealth of information, including contacts for educational advocates, social clubs that we should look into for my son, and most importantly, I was given the phone number of the ARC of Northern Virginia to inquire about waiver services. Although my son was born at the Virginia Hospital Center and was provided early intervention support, I admit that we were not well equipped with information to access the services he needed and certainly had no knowledge of waiver services. Well, all that changed the day I called the ARC of Northern Virginia. They were enormously helpful from the start and continue to be until today. They understood that I was in the information collection phase and needed guidance to connect me with the appropriate resources for my son. I was informed about the waiver program and encouraged to contact the community service board to get my son's name on the waiting list. Through the ARC and its plethora of education offerings, I learned the importance of gathering relevant information about my son's disability about the services that are available and about the specific things I could do to help him develop to the fullest extent possible. I also joined the arts mailing list right away to receive updates about happenings. I learned about an opportunity to attend the arts transition series at Marymount University. The transition series was such an impactful event and my first exposure to information related to my son's future in a comprehensive manner. Before attending this event, I focused on his current needs. The transition series made me realize the need to shift our thought process as a family and take the lead in defining and navigating our son's future. From there, we started to research and advocate for services from vocational employment agencies began to look into setting up a special needs trust to make arrangement for his long-term financial security, and even gathered 
uh, information on the future on future housing options, which seemed very far fetched at the time. Can believe he's almost eighteen now. In addition to the plethora of resources and information, the Arcs events have provided priceless and diverse networking opportunities. Over the years, I have met parents, experts in the disability community, and other advocates who are now part of my own community of support. My son was given the wonderful opportunity to serve as the DJ at the 2019 Oktoberfest. This, e this event was a highlight in my son's DJ career. In addition to his passion for music, he also serves as a youth leader for the I'm Determined Project and the MOVE Summit. Two of Vi the Virginia Department of Education initiatives that work with students with disabilities and provide free resources for educators, parents, and youth to support self-determined behaviors. Because of the ARC, I have become a perpetual advocate for my son and a connector in the community especially in matters related to transition to life after high school. With the support of the ARC, I have less anxiety that my son will be able to live and find support in the community. And I will continue to make sure that every parent who is raising a child with a disability knows about one of my best discoveries, the ARC of Northern Virginia. Next, you will have the pleasure of hearing from a man who needs no introduction and who is a well-known advocate and champion of the rights of persons with intellectual disabilities, Mr. David Egan. Hello, everyone. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak at this fundraising event. As a board member of the ARC of Northern Virginia, I'm proud to share in their vision. As you heard from individuals before me, the ARC of Northern Virginia is a vibrant organization. Thanks to their services, many individuals and families are able to live with dignity. I would like to tell you a little about me. When I turned 18, my dad asked me what I wanted to do with my life. I told him that I wanted to have a job and support the causes of people with disabilities. I think this is something I was born to do. That is why I'm here this morning to make sure that no one is left behind. We all deserve a chance to have a good life. As to my life, it has been a good one. At times, I think it's an amazing journey. My family, friends, neighbors, teachers, coaches, mentors, and employers took me seriously and gave me opportunities to succeed. As a young child, I was able to play, learn with my peers. As an adult, I'm able to work with my colleagues. I'm able to pursue a career of advocacy. That is no surprise. Why? It is possible because I grew up in a very inclusive environment and I continue to have opportunities to thrive. I wish that was the norm for all people with disabilities. Unfortunately, that is not always the case. And that's why we need the ARC of Northern Virginia. I'm determined to advocate with them and for them. They play a vital role in the lives of many individuals and families. I was born with Down syndrome, and I hear that it was not easy on my parents. In the 70s, individuals like me were sent to institutions, but I was not. My family fought for me to be fully included. They had expectations of me and offered me opportunities to discover my abilities. They wanted me to succeed in life. I was given opportunities to overcome challenges and to demonstrate my abilities. Having a disability does not mean no ability. I have over 20 years of experience in competitive employment as a clerk at Booz Allen Hamilton and then with CBRE in the same facility. Today, I am a community relations coordinator at Source America, advocating for the employment of people with disabilities. One of my proudest accomplishments in 2015 was to be selected as the first person with an intellectual disability to serve as a Joseph P. Kennedy Jr. Public Policy Fellow. I worked with the Ways and Means Social Security Subcommittee on Capitol Hill. I have a good life. Like you, I had challenges and opportunities. In many ways, we all share in the same humanity, and we are more alike than different. 
More Life Than Different, My Life with Down Syndrome, is the title of my book to be released in September. Please check it out on Amazon or on my website. Please go to DavidEganAccuracy.com. You've heard two types of stories here today. You've heard success stories of people like me who have found a support network and are living as much as possible a life like yours. And you've also heard stories of hardships where families need our help. They rely on the Arca in Northern Virginia to make things happen and offer solutions that support their loved ones. These families live among us in our Northern Virginia community. All told, there are more than 39,000 individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We all are citizens that need a helping hand in our journey. People with disabilities may need a little more help. The need may seem great, but our resolve is greater. Give us a chance to lead a good life and you will not regret it. The Arc of Virginia is that helping hand. With the help from each one of you, we can meet the challenge. Together, we can make a difference. So now my role at this breakfast is to ask all of you if you are ready to support the Arc of Northern Virginia. Are you ready? Our donation form is online at thearcofnova.org slash breakfast. A live link to the form should appear in the Zoom chat box. Please check the link in the Zoom chat and open the form in a new window on your computer. Large or small, your donation today has a direct impact on the programs and services that families have come to depend on. We provided a range of gift options for you to choose. I want to stress that every gift counts. All of us at the Ark of Northern Virginia are very thankful for the most important gift you gave today, the gift of your valuable time. We really appreciate that you took the time to learn more about the Ark of Northern Virginia and help our cause. On behalf of my colleagues on the Board of Directors, the Ark of Northern Virginia's amazing staff, our speakers today, and all those we serve, we sincerely thank each and every one of you. I want to give a special shout out to all the sponsors of The Breakfast. This is not just a donation to the Ark of Northern Virginia, it's truly an investment in our community. Thank you to ensure that everyone has an equal opportunity to truly live a life like yours. Don't forget to fill out the form. Thank you and have a wonderful day.